If you've ever been interested in competing in an action shooting competition, every single one, of course, has its own rule book. However, pretty much no matter what type you decide to do, whether it's USPSA, IDPA, Steel Challenge, Pro-Am, Multi-Gun, there are a couple of safety rules, three in specific, that pretty much all of them agree on. So this video is going to talk through those three things and what you can do to make sure you follow the safety rules. Since I'm about to be doing some stupid things, what I'm using is a CERT training pistol. It's not an actual gun, so don't get too bent out of shape when I break some rules here. So the first one is called the 180. If that direction is downrange, so there's the back berm, there's this thing where we go 90 degrees from that spot, and we have this thing called the 180 degree plane. Okay, it's centered on my body, it goes left, right, up and down, and the point to it is, from a safety perspective, if the muzzle of the gun ever goes past that 180 for any reason, that's not safe and that's a disqualification. It doesn't matter if it's left or right or up or down, as long as that muzzle goes past that 180 degree plane, that's a DQ. Now. Like we said, it's also up and down. So if you're one of those people that after you're done shooting, if it's time to move, you bring the gun vertically, watch out. Because if you turn, you might be pointing past the 180. In a similar fashion, if you're one of the people who after shooting, drops the gun and then uses that to steer yourself around in the middle there, you're going to break the 180. So watch out for that. Now, the 180 degree plane travels with your body. In other words, it's centered on me. So as I move, it stays with me. So if I start here, that doesn't mean if I back up, I have to watch out where I'm going. It's wherever I currently am. If I'm back here and shooting, that's different than if I'm up here and shooting. Where the 180 is travels with you. Most of the time, people do not have a problem with the 180. They keep the gun forward of it when they're shooting, when they're moving. It doesn't work out too badly, except for the, like I said, moving downward or moving with the gun upward. Sometimes the turning gets people. However, there is one place where people have to be especially careful, and that is when we're reloading as you're moving. Now, I'm left-handed. As such, if this is downrange and I'm shooting here and then I turn to move, currently my gun is pointing forward of the 180, so I'm fine. So here I am moving. As I'm moving, I need to reload. And most people, as they reload, they drop the magazine and then they cant the gun to put the second magazine into it. And the problem is canting the gun means now I'm suddenly pointed past the 180, and that's a disqualification. Now, if I was traveling to my strong side, my left, it wouldn't be much of a problem. I'm traveling this way, I cant it, that canting it actually makes it more downrange, so it's less of a problem. But anytime I'm moving to my weak side, I have to be very careful that my reloads are such that I carefully keep the gun pointed downrange and I don't cant it past the 180 degree line. Watch out when you're reloading while moving. One other place where it's common to be having issues with the 180 is when we're moving around a wall. Say we're forward of the edge of the wall, so we actually have to back up and then shift around to the other side. People have a tendency to do one of two things, and it depends on which direction they're going. Say I'm right-handed. Okay, I need to get around the wall. The good thing to do is to back up, keep the gun pointed here, shift far enough back around the wall so I can keep the gun ahead of me, and then shift to the other side. The problem is, when people are in a hurry, they default back to whatever it is they do when they're at home, which, for some people, is to take the gun down and use it to steer themselves around the wall. The problem is, when you do that, you obviously break the 180. So, when you're shifting around a wall, get back far enough so you can keep the gun pointed down range at all times. So that's if I'm moving to my strong side. If I'm moving to my weak side, for example, again, I'm left-handed, I need to back up and come around the wall. Some people have a tendency to let the gun trail after them. So I come around the wall, my gun is still pointed that way, I'm here, my gun just comes after me, and I bring it with me. Well, if it comes after me like that, that means, again, for a brief moment, it's pointing past the 180. And we can't have that happening. So the trick in both cases is to make sure you are clear enough of the wall so the gun stays in front of you, pointed, down range, whether it's strong side or weak side movement. Watch your 180 when you're doing anything on a stage. The same sort of thing happens anytime you've got a long gun or a carbine or something like that. Whether you're moving a PCC in a USPSA match or whether or not you're shooting multi-gun, people do the same thing. Okay. If I need to go around the wall, since this pokes out so much larger, a lot of people try and do this and come around the wall. Well, you're breaking 180 when you do that. Or they do this, turn, 
and come around the wall saying, well, it's vertical, that's fine. Well, again, the 180 extends upward. If I make it vertical and turn like this, I'm breaking the 180. So, if you're going around walls, going sideways, reloading, whatever, make sure the gun stays pointed down range at all times. The second main safety rule everyone seems to agree on is what's called sweeping. Sweeping means taking the muzzle of the gun and allowing it to cross any portion of your body or anyone else's body. Okay? If I have an arm out here, again, this is not a real gun, and I cross the muzzle past myself, I have swept myself, and we consider that a bad thing. Okay? If you are in the habit of sweeping a part of your body with your gun muzzle, chances are at some point in time you're going to put a hole in yourself. And in a match, we're not going to wait for that to happen. Instead, we're going to stop you, DQ you, tell you to go home, practice a little bit, and then come back next time when you're not going to do that anymore. Two major places where people have problems with sweeping, um, and they are the draw and reholstering. When we're actually doing a draw, we should be able to take the gun out, shoot, and then reholster it one-handed with your other hand no near it. Some people, unfortunately, seem to have this tendency to bring their other hand down here, bring the gun up right across it so they can get their grip, and then extend it out that way. Well, they're taking a loaded gun and sweeping it across their body. One of these days, they're going to put a hole in there, and so that is going to be a DQ before that happens. In a similar fashion, there are a number of people who, as after they're done shooting, they reach out, secure the holster, and then reholster right across their hand. If your holster is so bad that it cannot remain stable enough for you to reholster one-handedly, you need a new holster. Okay? Don't have your other hand anywhere near your holster as you are drawing or reholstering. Make sure the gun is out. Put the other hand on it in a similar fashion before you reholster. Get the other hand off of it, out of the way, and then reholster. Be very careful with that. Do not sweep yourself. If you're moving and running, don't have your hand out here and then come across. That's sweeping. If you're reaching out to do something with a door and then pick up your gun, that's sweeping. Don't do any of those things. Be very careful. Pay attention at all times to where the muzzle of your gun is pointing. In addition to keeping it in front of the 180, don't point it at anything you'd really rather not have a hole in. That's yourself and anyone else. Don't sweep yourself. The third main safety rule is finger. And you're going to hear that call periodically in a match somewhere. Finger! The RO says really loudly. Pretty much no matter what shooting sport you're doing, pretty much every single one agrees that if you are loading the gun, unloading the gun, reloading the gun, doing any sort of remedial action, clearing a jam, or any of those things, the finger should be visibly outside the trigger guard. Okay, not merely off the trigger, but visibly outside the trigger guard. If in the middle of the match you have your finger on the trigger and you are about to hammer a magazine in there, we are not going to wait for you to accidentally hammer it so much you light one off over the berm. Finger must be visibly outside the trigger guard while loading, unloading, re reloading, or performing any sort of remedial action. Keep the finger off the trigger unless you're actively shooting. The second part of the finger thing has to do with movement. Again, if you're not actively shooting at targets, but you're performing any sort of movement, the finger must be visibly outside the trigger guard. We don't want you running like this, because at some point in time you're going to get surprised, stumble, or whatever, and you're going to light one off. Keep your finger off the trigger while you're doing any sort of movement, unless you are actively engaging targets. If you're engaging targets, well, obviously you should be shooting. But if you're not, finger visibly outside the trigger guard. So there's the three main safety points. Watch your 180. Don't sweep yourself or anyone else. Keep your finger visibly outside of the trigger guard unless you are actively engaging targets. If you do those three things, you're pretty much going to be fine. Yes, there's a lot of other little rules here and there, but those are the three that most people really need to pay attention to when they're shooting any sort of action pistol match or action shooting competition.